Hi, you guys. I'm really excited to start this whole like recipe blog thing with you guys. Um, this actual recipe is on my website, so that way you guys can have a list of ingredients and specific instructions like to read. But I'm just going to kind of walk through not only this recipe, so we're going to be making a butternut squash curry. So I make this recipe a little bit more vegetarian based. That way I can either eat it as is, or if I'm adding into that particular part in time in my own nutrition plan, um, different types of proteins, you can add fish, beef, chicken, whatever is your go-to into this recipe, and it tastes just as good and it doesn't screw anything up. So again, all your ingredients are gonna be listed down below, but they're also gonna be on the blog. And then I'm gonna kind of walk you through why I do things the way I do. So the first things first is I have all my ingredients laid out in front of me. I have a couple extra bowls actually too because when the recipe says to get all of your ingredients together, cups, teaspoons, all that kind of stuff, have it ready, have it cut um, because you don't want to overcook anything, you don't want to undercook anything, you don't want to be scrambling trying to cut something super, super fast. So just take your time. The more you feel prepared before you actually start cooking, it lets the recipe just happen. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all of my ingredients and then I will see you guys later. Okay, so I have my vegetables and everything that I need kind of laid out and cut. A um, Couple things about this recipe I also enjoy is even though I specified certain things that you need into this recipe, sometimes if I have some extra stuff in my fridge that I need to use, I also throw it in this recipe as well. So I have some extra cauliflower and some broccoli that I'll be throwing in there along with the other ingredients. And then with ginger, the boy doesn't like ginger in this when I cook it, but I'm cooking this for me this time, so I do. So not only do I actually grate my ginger, but then I also have ground ginger. So I add a little bit more because it does really bring out a strong flavor in this. And then the other things that I also put in this are always my pink Himalayan sea salt. So sea salt and salt in general is a really good electrolyte for your system. Try not to use iodized table salt. You want something that your body knows how to break down and don't be afraid to salt your foods. Just don't salt it and then salt it afterwards. Just whatever you put into your ingredients, do it then, not adding more on top of it. And that's where that you know line between having too much sodium into your system or having not enough. Um, and for women, we actually need a little bit more than men. So it's all good. So now that we have everything kind of laid out, we're gonna get our cooking started. Okay, so a couple tips when you start actually cooking this, do make sure that your pan is fully heated and your oil is covering the pan. I used to be one of those people that would throw in my oil, the food, and then start it all at the same time. But it does help your food cook a little bit differently and your food not stick to the pan when you're cooking. Um, a trick to caramelizing your onions when you first start cooking this recipe is let them sit there. A lot of times you're gonna want to try to stir them around to get things done. Don't do that. Alrighty, so I've let my onions caramelize. I've already thrown in my butternut squash. Trick to this too is if you add a little bit more butternut squash or it doesn't seem like it's cooking quite enough, go ahead and feel free to throw a little bit more oil on it. But you see my pan? My seasoning's all around it versus just dumping it in there. This makes it easy that when you actually stir up your vegetables, that they coat evenly. So that way, if you get a bite later, you can't tell that, oh, I might have put more, you know, ginger or curry or something else on it. But um, I do use so the red curry paste and then the yellow, yellow curry powder. So different types of curry is gonna give you a different type of flavor. And then once your vegetables are kind of coated, you're gonna let them simmer into those spices a little bit longer. And then we're going to add in your juices.
So as I let it simmer here, um, you can kind of make this a different texture as well. I like mine to be a little bit more on the soupy side versus more of a thicker uh, mixture. So I actually always add in a little bit of um, extra broth to mine just where I like it. So follow the recipe and it gives you exactly how much you need to make it work. And then if you're like me and you want it more of like a soup consistency, so it's a little bit more liquidy, then just add in a little bit more of your broth liquid. Alrighty, so as your recipe starts coming to a boil, this is where you want to start checking your vegetables. Um, I added my cauliflower and my broccoli. So broccoli is really easy because the color changes. The, the richer of a green means it's starting to cook, and then if you cook it too long, it creates that like darkish green brown color. So you want it when it starts turning a little bit lighter green than a couple minutes after. Cauliflower takes a little longer, so I added that in sooner. And then of course the easiest thing that you can do is we're actually going to take a fork and try to push in one of my butternut squash. So it's still kind of chunky. So if it's not a super smooth dip of your fork into the butternut squash, it's not quite ready. So as soon as your butternut squash is ready, that's when you're gonna add in your actual greens. So I've made this with bok choy, spinach, kale. This is a superfoods greens mix. So it has kale, arugula, spinach, a bunch of different greens into the mix that I'm gonna throw there instead. So as soon as my butternut squash is about done, you're gonna throw those in there just enough so they start to wilt. You don't wanna overcook those as well. And then think about what kind of a base that you wanna put this on. So you can eat it as is, more again like a soup, Kind of vegetable mixture you can also put it on top of quinoa you can add in potatoes i like to do um quinoa or rice this one's really good with white rice and then again if you decided that you wanted to add a protein to this as well this is when you're going to want to start either cooking your protein or add something in to the side that you can put on top of it later so i'm going to let mine cook a little bit longer and then i'm going to actually start cooking up some brown rice for mine and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done so I don't know about you, but this is always my favorite part of cooking is the actual eating portion of it. So all my vegetables and stuff are cooked. I cooked brown rice and I had enough that I actually made four servings. So that's what this recipe makes is four servings. Of course, if you add in more liquid, if you add more stuff into it, it can tend to make a lot more. So I've already portioned out my um, containers. So I have three containers in the bowl. So I have the one that I'm gonna use for lunch. And now I have lunch for the next three days. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to like change things up, right? Like I said, maybe you do quinoa, maybe you add chicken, maybe you don't, maybe you use this for dinner. There's so many different ways that you can use this. And so I just go through and I scoop up my spoonfuls and a little bit of liquid. And I just go down the line and I add them to all four of my dishes. So this is where when people say, you know, I don't know how to meal prep, I don't wanna do that. I don't know what to do. This is how I do it sometimes, right? Because even though if I'm gonna be home, one, I still get a fresh cooked meal, right? And I do get leftovers. This is also easier, again, if I go visit the boy and he needs something to eat, I already have something made for him. But this goes without saying that literally this recipe shouldn't take you more than an hour to actually do. But I just made myself lunch for four days. So the other thing that you can do with some of these is make big batches of them and then you can freeze them so you can like put them in i use glass dishes um you can put them in the freezer let the recipe cool down first and then you can pull it out later kind of as like a frozen meal but you know that you made it so you know the ingredients that are in it you know that you can add proteins to it if that's what you want but otherwise just go through divvy it out maybe you made this for friends for lunch whatever you want to do. And then you have yourself some butternut squash curry. So again, a lot of these recipes that I have, they look complicated, they seem complicated, but they're really actually not. And now I just saved myself four days of cooking with my healthier options. So, Again, this recipe is online, so you know what to go buy from the grocery store, and so you have written directions as well. Obviously, I cut a lot of this video out just so I can get you guys to the finishing portions, but one, cut everything beforehand. It makes things a lot easier, and then you don't overcook things. 
Make sure you fully coat your pants. This is one of those recipes where you can add in and take away and that's why it's so easy for to do. And if you have a picky eater, my boyfriend's not a picky eater, but if you have certain things that you like that your significant other doesn't like, you can take out or put in different spices and other ingredients that kind of compromises, right? So there you go, butternut squash curry. And I hope to see you next time. Um, not sure we're gonna do banking yet. So till next time.